Welcome to Free Association on the Sportsnet Podcast Network, where one of the hosts shaved without a mirror this morning and is now self-conscious about the cameras picking up his facial hair. I'm J.D. Bunkus. He's Donovan Bennett. You are the listener and the viewer who gets to decide which of those two people is the one who shaved without the mirror. Um, we're doing a special podcast today. We're, we're jumping out of order because it was a special night in Raptors land last night because Kawhi Leonard returned to the home of the NBA champions here in Toronto. And they had, I got into a debate immediately the second I stepped in here with everyone as to whether that was a ceremony or a presentation or how we're actually putting that into a box. Either way, I think the ceremony slash presentation was incredibly well executed. And the, the evening went exactly the way that I think you, especially Donovan, thought it was going to go. I mean, life is all ways about expectations, right? Mm -hmm. And, I think the Raptors first off handled it beautifully. Mm -hmm. The video tribute, both the one they put out on social earlier in the day, one in the building was great. And a lot of American commentators were talking about, oh my goodness, this video tribute was amazing. Well, have you seen their in-house video productions? Have you seen uh, Open Gym? Like they crush it all of the time. So that wasn't a surprise for anyone who's followed the team. But I think what was a surprise and why there's a debate on it, if it was a ceremony or a procedure if you will <laughs> is because when you say be in your seats at 6 45 mm. for this special thing and then at 707 eastern standard time when yeah. the building is full everyone is in their seat the special thing is the guys who played with them are going to stand on the court give him like a shrug like a half handshake hug he's going to get his ring joke like he's going to tear up and then that's okay that's it let's start the game like there was no speech and granted Kawhi is not a man of many words so he may have said you can give me that mic but i'm not saying anything into it yeah but there's no speech from Kawhi or masai or ed rogers or drake or navbatia there was no unveiling of of his jersey and the rafters like Thank you goodness. you just thought it was going to build to something else and then it was a bit anticlimactic. Did you found it to be anticlimactic? Again, when you tell people, oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Yes, yes. Fight to get yeah. there. This is going to be so yeah. different, <laughs> and it wasn't that different. But do you think that there was anything about it that changed because people didn't get to their seats on time and they kept having to push it back? Because that's just not Toronto. You ask Toronto to get to the seats on time. Sneaky, tough city to get people to the seats at the correct or in correct order. No. Were people there? I can't remember. No, no, people were there. The, yeah, bu the, I, the, the building was full. I just remember having that I same thought. I think people thought. would have been there, though, to see him and to cheer him mm -hmm. anyways. But when, but when it was mandated from the team, mm -hmm. we got something for you. Open eyes emoji. It's like, okay, I'm <laughs> expecting something big and i and the and did they do open eyes emoji or was that your addition that was my addition i don't think they did that yeah. um the, the endless the, the even the footsteps uh -huh. cool the, the light thing was nice so cool well it, yes but it was also much better if you were watching it from the gondola in the building than if you were watching it on tv the, the effect of it would have looked better if you were actually there mm -hmm. but i mean if we're gonna do it there's no half step in what was the best part of that shot if we, if we had to, to rank them. Was it the path that he took to get to the corner? Yeah. No. No, 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 it wasn't. The best part of the From shot. From that visual standpoint, that's the best they could have done. No. Have you ever seen those? The best part of the shot was the four bounces yeah. and the reaction. And we just had a slow zoom. From the, from the camera on high, from Dude. the high jib. It, we needed like the shadows of the ball underneath the rim to show the bounces, or we needed the camera to bob up and down as it was following the ball. We needed a cut to the corner where there's like a hologram of Kawhi squatting down. We need to bring back Jordan Lloyd to wear the suit. <laughs> oh, did you imagine? Like we they need to really to make stand. it a thing. Yeah. And so again, life is all about expectations. If there was no mass text saying be here mm -hmm. early, then I would be like, yeah, that was cool. But I, I thought there was going to be a surprise of some sort. I, to me, the footsteps were a surprise, but now that you, this is why you're my favorite podcast host. You make me think about things differently. And now I, you're right. That sucked. <laughs> they could have wow. done it better. No, did, did you see the, uh, have you ever seen those? What are those soccer leagues? Oh, well, maybe you know this. Have you ever seen them? They'll be like in South America or something. They'll have like a holographic lion and it'll be up in the sky or a dragon. You ever see the one where the dragon, the holographic dragon is like flying around the stadium? No. 
oh, that exists now. They have legitimate holograms in sports stadiums. No, I would have been fine with just a like big tifo in the in the. What's a tifo? The, the big a big sign that like the either end of the stadium is holding up that basically takes up the whole stadium. It's like a paper sign, if you will. I don't know. I, I I'm having a tough time. I'm like paper. How do you sign. describe a tifo? Uh, Amal. It's being it's it's held up with basically with, with sticks. Oh, it's like the thing where they put all the people together and then it's they're on the floor. They all make a little piece of the like the ad. But it, no, well, it goes straight up. It's not like the we the north thing that goes across yeah. the one hundred section and people are keeping up with their hands. I hate those, by the way. I get uh, anxious. Well, you hate I... them if you're in the in the middle yeah, of them. But exactly. if you're a TV director, you're like cut yeah, to awesome, it. It looks yeah. good. Um, no, it's TIFO is made by by the supporter section. It's got okay. sticks and it's it's basically like a huge flag held by a whole section of people. guys. You got to drop in the holographic lion slash. Uh, dragon that flies around the stadium into this thing. I'm telling you, we have we have the technology. All right, you're right. They sh what they should have had is holographic Kawhi do the shot. How cool would that have been? That would have broke the internet. Holographic Kawhi, holographic ball doing the rim mounts could have been better. Raptors, you kind of blew it. All right, <laughs> even though in the moment I was emotional, I was trapped by the the footsteps. A little underwhelming. Uh, you're 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 burying the lead though. What's the lead? The most interesting thing was was not the game, uh, and hopefully mm -hmm. we're not going to talk about it because it was terrible. I have one thought on the game. Uh, all right. Um, it was not the pregame. Mm -hmm. The most interesting thing that happened at Scotiabank Arena was, I, I believe it was Sirit who asked the question. I could be Yeah, the wrong. FU thing on the ring? Yeah, yeah, it was her. About what is the deal with his alleged logo in the middle of the ring? I guess it's not alleged because he confirmed it. What's the backstory? And he kind of... Gave you the politician lie. Well, you know, it's to remind me that it's supposed to go on my middle finger. And then he was like, yeah, but it's an FU symbol. Mm -hmm. And everyone was like, come again? Mm -hmm. Like, that was the most interesting thing. And we still don't even know the story, but that that's how I'm going to remember Kawhi night. How I'm going to remember Kawhi and his departure and all the things that happened after the championship was underestimating Kawhi. And thinking, this guy from... Think about what you thought of Kawhi when it first started or when the experiment in Toronto started, which was that he was this mysterious guy, but really there was really nothing. Not that there was nothing there from, I mean, an intelligence standpoint, but that the personality was very small and that he wasn't overly complicated, that he just wanted to play basketball and be healthy, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we knew about him. He just wanted to play basketball and be healthy. And then we got, I'm a fun guy. And everything from that point leading out was like the FU thing was just another example of kind of underestimating Kawhi and his, yeah, his sense of humor. The other thing about the middle finger is, at first I thought, why would anyone get a ring size for their middle finger? And then I realized, oh, right, he's Kawhi Leonard. A, he already has a ring, and he probably has uh, machinations of getting other rings, and he wants to have the picture someday where he's doing the Tom Brady with multiple fingers on the rings. When you're the type of champion who cannot get size for a ring finger, and you start accounting for other rings, that's greatness right there, baby. Yeah, I, I don't think Kawhi is the type to ever wear his rings in public. But, but at some point, he wants to have the shoot. Well, I, I, I think he's, I would say right now, he's the betting favorite to get another ring this year, based on the way that team is playing right now. Uh, I think they're in a conversation. It's them and two other teams that coming into the season, I thought... Who are the two other teams? Lakers and Bucks. Bucks have won 16 in a row, and they just won last night without Giannis. They stomped out, and they just whooped the Clippers in their gym. They got to be at least in the commerce. I'm just saying between those three teams, it's like if you choose the Clippers, I'm not saying they're not. I'm just saying you could tell me one of those three teams right now is the favorite. And I would say you have a case to make it for any one of those teams. But last night was special. And I know we're joking around. It, it really did feel like Kawhi Leonard talking before the game had mentioned he it was a difficult decision for him um, that he loved his time in Toronto. I think everybody knows this. And it's why. As much as, I, I don't know if we talked about this on the last podcast, but there's this idea that he was just a mercenary. And to a large degree, that's true, right? Because Masai went out and acquired a guy that originally did not want to be here. And he played ball and he did everything that was asked of him, right? But that at the end of it, mercenaries and their employers are not supposed to have feelings about one another. 
And my general impression from Kawhi Leonard over this last day was that he does feel a certain way about Toronto, that he does have an affinity for this place. And clearly the love from the city, like it's there for him. Even in his post game where he said, I didn't need them to prove anything tonight. They already, they already proved it to me. I, I just, I think that these two will always be interlinked. I'm not sure Kawhi Leonard will ever be able to have an individual run that is more brilliant than his time in Toronto. I, I still believe this is when Kawhi really became uh, a completely different entity in the NBA in terms of how we perceive him. And that it, it, it just wasn't a one-way street in terms of the love between Toronto and Kawhi Leonard. I don't think Kawhi Leonard has emotions for Toronto because I don't think Kawhi Leonard has emotions. Mm. I, I think he's indifferent at best. It, his post-game sound, I mean, if you look at the text, it sounds very nice, but if you look at him say it, the audio person tracking it is like, is he speaking or not? But I can't tell. The levels haven't changed. Yeah. And, and I don't think his level of, of interest for the city has changed all that much. It, there's a, a, One of the many billboards that went up before the game was a new balance billboard with photo of Leonard. He did not says do thank that, you Toronto. Way. Do you think Kawhi Leonard had no. anything to do with that? Zero. He learned about it l- <laughs> yeah. literally when he was coming off the Gardner Expressway yeah. in the coach bus yeah. looking at it. <laughs> yeah, like that's that's oh. that's when he learned about it. He probably it. thought he's like, "Oh, they still keep a they still keep a video of me up here, eh? That's nice. I do I am the king of the north." Yeah. So I it, if you were, were in the United States um, and watched the broadcast um, on ESPN, really smart production choice they had uh two box so they had picture in picture they had the ceremony in a big box and in a in a, in a smaller box they had Kawhi leonard watching the ceremony hmm. he had little to no expression on his face the entire time at some point that's who he, is. he was distracted like he was looking around i'm like unless you have the worst case of attention deficit disorder what else are you looking at at this moment when everyone in the arena is looking at you on the screen hmm doing the best basketball things we saw in 2019. I think we underestimate Kawhi Leonard in that way. I think he likes the limelight. I think he likes the spotlight. We, we underestimate how emotional he was. No, I, the only emotion he showed was making fun at the mere thought that he might cry. Kawhi Leonard went to the Clippers because he didn't want to be overshadowed to a lar- to some degree by LeBron James or Anthony Davis. He wanted to make it very clear what the pecking order was of his basketball team and what the hierarchy was. And that was him first and then Paul George. I believe. Well, I think you should stop after Kawhi Leonard went to the Clippers because. So we really have no idea. Kawhi Leonard could have gone to the Clippers because. He wanted to be in L.A. and he wanted to win. Or because the, Uncle the, Dennis is going to be the CEO of Microsoft in seven years. Like, we, we honestly have no idea why he went there. Sell your stock. <laughs> sell your stock. I, I, you know what? That sounds too real to me. I'm already out on it. Yeah, I, I just... I, uh, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm being foolish. Maybe you're actually being more uh, more intelligent about it. I just, I will. I would like to believe, anyways, that Kawhi Leonard uh, values his time here, and that it's impossible for someone, even who seems as disassociated with um, people and who's dis- uh, like just keeps a very tight circle, who doesn't seem on the surface to be interested in a lot of things that. The parade and the plant guy and the way that he brought back the ha ha ha. He's just, I think he's more into this stuff than than we give him credit for sometimes in the moment. And and the FU was just kind of like a little bit of another example of that. Um, before we, the game was a, was a bait down. Uh, there was a moment there where they cut it to five in the third quarter and you thought for a second, okay, they're at least going to make a push. I don't really have an observation on the game. I just, like it's a one-off game. But the Raptors are clearly slumping right now, right? Like they, their last five games, they've been brutal. Their offense has just been completely dis, uh, like unhinged. Lowry working his way back. He's, he's working himself back into a rhythm. Serge Ibaka has been ice cold. Siakam has been far more passive, and he has not been the same guy from a percentages standpoint or even as a willingness to continue to look for his offense. I would say that as of right now, only OG Ananobi, Norm Powell, and to a lesser extent, just because of the role he plays, Marc Gasol, like if you look at the five games, he's still got a positive plus minus, that those are the three guys that have been fine or are playing a little bit above average and don't appear to be slumping. The Raps are now three and eight in the 11 games they've played against good teams. They're a minus 47 point differential. And I have included the Utah Jazz, who I think are only two games above 500 and have not been a very good basketball team this year in that conversation of good teams, which gives them a plus 20 in that category. My question to you is one I've been thinking about over the last 
I don't know, 24 hours. They're in a slump. But how far down are they playing right now from what you expect them to actually end up being as a basketball team come the end of the year? Sports is great because it's a meritocracy and because it's, there's no debate. You are what your record says you are. That's, that's, it, that's it, right? Uh, Brian Burke says this all the time about his time as a GM. At the end of the year, we could debate, is this smart? Was that smart? You get a report card at the end of the year. It says, did you make the playoffs? Did you not? This was, was your, what your record is. And so as excited as people got when they went 9-2 and two without Kyle Lowry and people were coming at your neck for saying, should they entertain trading Kyle Lowry when he came back and they were coming at me for saying that oh my goodness this team might finish <gasps> third or fourth in the east how disrespectful a- as excited as those people were things were not that good it was a bit of a mirage soft schedule uh, and now they they have lost three of their last four and they're probably not that bad mm-hmm. they are somewhere in between which is what they always were, and mm-hmm. which is what we all thought they would be coming into the season. Mm-hmm. They thought they were going to be a pretty good team, that they were going to play tough teams well. They're a team that you don't want to see necessarily in the first round of the playoffs, but that they ultimately don't have a 1A star. Pascal Siakam may get there, but along the way, there are bumps in the road and growing pains to getting to that point, and that there's going to be some rough patches. And if this team gels really well, then maybe they won't be sellers at the deadline. And if they don't, and if the bottom falls out, then they would be. And that's kind of where we are. They've had a really hot streak and now a really cold one. But at the end of the day, they are in the murky middle of a bunch of competitive teams in the East. And they're not at the top because they don't have Giannis. Like that, I mean, that, to me, that's what, that's what they are. That they, they defend well, and if they hit shots, they can win. And if they don't, they won't. They do not have the depth of star power that some of their contemporaries have in the Eastern Conference or the teams that we have compared themselves to have. And the more I think about this team, and this even applies to the NBA postseason, I think they're a really good defensive team. They're an above average defensive team that can defend just about anybody on any given night. In fact, the one positive from that game was OG Ananobi and the way he played defense against Kawhi Leonard. He didn't look out of place. Did Kawhi bully him sometimes? Yep, but that's what Kawhi Leonard does. They're a really good defensive team with and without Kawhi Leonard, a bunch of inconsistent offensive players who can get hot. They are all capable when Kyle Lowry's on, when Norm Powell's on, when Siakam is himself, when Marcus Saul is knocking down that three point shot, they are capable of looking like a really complete team. But the one thing that they lack with their offense is that they are not consistent. They just don't have that yet. It's it's not there. You're right. The Siakam thing is it's still a bumpy road. It's not linear with him. He didn't just go from being someone who was uh, the Pascal Siakam from a season ago to a guy who every game, night in, night out, right now is proven to be a 26-a-game scorer or a 1A guy that you can look to in all situations. There's a reason why Kyle Lowry took the shot the other night in Chicago. There's a reason why Norm Powell continues to be you know one of the guys that they look to to be a closer on this team. They, Who's the most consistent offensive player, would you say, right now on this Raptors team? I'd say it's Fred Van Vliet. Uh, I was going to say Fred. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it's funny, the... Game since he's had his bone contusion, and last night against LA was the greatest example. If I'm Fred's agent, mm-hmm. I'm taking clips of them without him in the half court, mm-hmm. and I'm playing it for teams. I'm like, this is why you should pay my client. Honestly, yeah, I would show them the locking down Steph Curry and knocking down big final shots. But yeah, you, <laughs> I think both that, are pretty good. That that would work as well. Yeah, I and, sorry, go on. No, no, and I had this thought earlier in the year, but I was like, let's wait for some more games. Let's really workshop it and make sure. So I'm not just, you know, being a small sample size theater, hot take artist. Mm -hmm. But if you look at point guards in the East, how many of them deserve all-star consideration ahead of Fred VanVleet? The the actual list is not that long. And I know that sounds crazy to say. Kemba. uh, Kemba, Kyrie, if, if, if healthy. Mm. You're you're gonna vote. You're gonna vote for, <laughs> for Fred just, over Kyrie. I'm just saying. I, it's Kemba, a, Kyrie, yeah, right. Trey. Mm. That's come on. Now you're now you're being <laughs> yeah, right. just, Trey. Trey couldn't stay on the floor with his team up six. They sub him out the other night against Miami because they don't trust him to play any defense. You know who's not getting subbed out at the end of a ball game when you need to win? Freddie Van Vliet. Well, you know who's hitting 
three pointers from forty feet Fred! away. Fred, Fred now too, not from forty. Yeah, is um, that the measure now? Is who can shoot from the furthest? I bet kids in young gyms now do think that. Probably. I'm just. I'm just. Yeah. Well, listen. I'm not trying to argue the point because yeah. you, you are proving it. Yeah. If you consider Ben Simmons a point guard, he's no. going to get vo- votes. That's not fair. He, and gonna, guess what? No, but he's gonna, no, mm. but he, we're, no, but realistically, he's yeah. going to get votes. I'm but, such a homer. But the, <laughs> it's uh, embarrassing. True. But <laughs> the point is, if we came into this com- in this year and said, well, Fred Van Vliet is going to be in the all-star consideration, you'd be like, get out of here. Mm-hmm. Well, there's, he's going to spot start at the beginning of the year, and that's it. And now, how many other point guards in the East have played better, including the other one on his team? And the list is not that long. Well, I don't think Fred Van Vliet is better than Kyle Lowry, but he's having a better season than Kyle Lowry yes. now with the games that – like Kyle hasn't been healthy, and since he's been back, he just – he hasn't been the same guy. And I, I do think that it's a confluence of events. It's working Kyle and Serge back in. It's slumping and having some bad shooting nights. It's playing some tougher competition. It's some of the guys being a little bit tired. It, the, I don't think the Raptors aren't as bad as they've looked over the last five, but I, I think I'm with you where uh, we might've gotten ahead of ourselves a little bit when they went on that West coast road trip and, and beat the Lakers at the end of a game and then took that game against the trailblazers and started getting these machinations of, well, are they that contender tier? They really, you've said it all along in order to, for us to legitimately consider them that there has to be a consistency that this early in the season we're starting to see just isn't quite there yet. Um, we got to wrap it up. Do you have a, a parting thought that you want to you wanna put down? I do. And so whether it was a, a ceremony or a procedure, there was a couple uh, events that happened throughout the game. All right. Obviously Kawhi pregame. Yep. Uh, Lou Williams was honored. Yeah. Okay. They played I six man. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and Drake was screaming Lou. Um uh, Kevin Gale, the young uh, yeah. Canadian rookie for the Clippers, uh, as this year they are shouting out Canada basketball players as they come through town. He was very excited to get shouted out. Out of all the Clippers who got shouted out, he was the one that was the most excited, not Lou or yeah, Kawhi. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's like, when we go up tonight, people are going to know who I am. This is amazing. Um, well, he's he's uh, Dikembe's nephew. People yeah. should know who he is. Um Castleberry also got his ring yeah. pregame. I saw he was on the Jumbotron. <laughs> yes, he was. Congratulations, Jeremy Castleberry. How mad are you if you are Patrick Patterson? Did he not end up getting one? Not that I Oof. saw. Who played f- for more games as a Raptor than Lou Williams and Kawhi Leonard combined, who came back to the city to get married this summer. Mm-hmm. And he and actually played very well. Mm. Uh, everyone on the Clippers bench played very well. Um, to not get an acknowledgement. How mad are you if you are Pat Pat? Didn't, didn't he have a Players' Tribune article about how much he loves Toronto? This is why I was going to say there was something when Patterson left where he kicked a little dirt on the franchise. I can't recall exactly what it was. I'll, I'll look it up for next time. He said something about the organization or about the Raptors that people took the wrong way, or then he celebrated when they lost to the Cavs. There was something in there where Pat Pat decided to turn heel. I remember it. It was on social media and people went after him. Like, I can't believe you would do this Patterson. And I wonder if that has caused the divide between Pat Pat and the Raptors, because I would like to call for the healing between these two things. Patterson needed to go at the end because he was just so broken in the postseason. His final appearance for the Raptors, he couldn't, hit water from a boat. He just, it was one of those things where a guy clearly had the yips. He, he could not hit a three pointer, but Patterson was good here, man. He was a plus minus all-star. He embraced being a Toronto Raptor. He embraced, embraced the city of Toronto. We got to see the other side of him. He did a podcast, uh, two mats and two pats. He did movie reviews. People universally liked Patrick Patterson. You're right. He, he must've married a Toronto girl. If he got married here, he he's, be one of us, one of us, heal the wounds with Patrick Patterson. Might as well play for the national team. I just let him on, let him take a run. He, he wouldn't make it because we're too good now. And all the boys are showing up, but it, let him have a tryout at least. Let him battle for a position with uh, Kelly Olenek, who's going to put him in a body bag. But anyway, Patrick Patterson, he, I liked Pat Pat. I enjoyed his time here. I loved defending that, having the debate of whether or not he should be a starter and whether or not it, something mentally he needs to come off the bench. Dwayne Casey's usage of him, him being a closer. Uh, Patrick Patterson, plus minus, plus minus goat of the Raptors run, Lowry plus the bench. I remember the good times, and that's what I choose to remember. You should have gotten. You should be mad. You were good. Uh, you had one bad tweet. Let's move on. Let's move forward. Well, before the end of the year, and please tweet in your submissions as we wrap this up. Yeah. Um, 
we should put out our Raptors all decade team mm-hmm. starters and, and we could fill out the bench. Uh, starters will be pretty easy aside from maybe one or two spots. I'm here to tell you that Pat Pat would make the Raptors all decade. Team. Yeah. He's coming off the bench. He's, he's got to He's got to be, uh, we got to wrap it up. Should we promote the mailbag now that we're going to be doing? No. Not yet. We're gonna, hey, well, I kind of just did, but it doesn't matter. I'm not promoting it any further. Uh, thanks for listening to this. Leave a five-star review. Uh, we're actually going to get a sit down with, uh, Dewan Hernandez is coming in. We're going to do that later. It's going to be on a different podcast, but, uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing. We'll talk to you later.